Real Bragging Right is presented by Steel Shad. Cast farther at SteelShad.com. Fisherman Central, top brand fishing tackle at FishermanCentral.com. This week on Bragging Rights. Today could be some of the best fishing you ever watch on television. Jim challenges fly fishing veteran Brooks Robinson to a one-on-one -on -one duel on the Salmon River in upstate New York. The fall salmon run is about to break loose, and Jim and Brooks make a wager. He'll spend one day fishing Lake Ontario. Feels real nice, Jim. Coming at me. And one day on the river. Oh, that was tough. Whoever can catch the longest fish gets this week's Bragging Rights. Hooked up on a giant. It's a Salmon River Showdown. My name is Jim Root, and I'm addicted to catching big fish. I quit my desk job to follow my passion, exploring beautiful places and landing trophy fish. After fishing bass, FLW, and writing a number one best-selling book, I'm on a mission to showcase the most incredible fishing across America and the world. Each week, I find an awesome piece of water and challenge a friend. We place our bets and go head to head for real bragging rights. We're in Pulaski, New York. We're in the northern portion of what New Yorkers would consider central New York. We're on the east end of Lake Ontario, and uh, we are located in the lower two and a half miles of the Salmon River. Fall season is the salmon run. The salmon are mature and they are migrating from Lake Ontario up the Salmon River in order to spawn. In the next two to three weeks, we'll have thousands of salmon making their spawning migration up the Salmon River, which draws all the anglers. This is my good friend, Brooks Robinson. Brooks and I go back 10 years, probably. Really looking forward to putting the whooping on him today. Uh, I've been fishing Salmon River in Pulaski for about 24, 25 years, so quite a long time. We're going to do biggest fish, yep. which is yep. if I win, you give me Betty. Betty? That's going to be tough to part with. Betty is his favorite salmon rod. How many fish do you think you caught on that I'd rod? I'd say almost all of them <laughs> over the years. All right, if, if you win, I'll give up Betty. Okay. If I win, then I get your brand new river quiver. What? All right, deal? Yeah. All right, shake on it? Yeah. So today we're gonna head out anywhere from a quarter mile to a mile out offshore, uh, out in the mouth in front of a couple of the rivers here, Lake Ontario, we're gonna be trolling for salmon. We got a lot of fish that are staging out in front of the river, getting ready to run the river. Uh, water temps aren't there yet, but the fish are biting out here, so that's why we're here and we're gonna get it done. I've been up to the lake since I've been five or six years old. A buddy of mine, his dad had a boat up here. The conditions today are we're having an upwelling right now, which means that the warm water is blowing out into the lake and the cold water is rushing in underneath. They just gotta get in a comfort zone here and hopefully as the sun goes down, they'll start biting. Right now on the outside two riggers, we've got a tracker and a tonic flies. On our middle rigger, we have a steel shad. On each dipsy diver, one of them we have a uh, tractor and fly. The other one we have a tractor with a piece of cup bait. We have a 300 copper down the middle with a piece of cup bait. And then we have a seven color lead core with a J plug. Rock, paper, scissors for first rod. Ready? One, two, three, shoot. Best out of three. <laughs> I knew you know you were going to say that. Three. All right, okay. okay. One, two, three, shoot. You totally. <laughs> All right, fine. I'm never good at that. <laughs> Screamer! Coming at me. Jim wins the right to set the hook on the first fish. And it's a good bite. Oh, no. Yeah, he's gone. What happened there, buddy? I'm pretty sure Jim lost that fish. <laughs> <laughs> Whose turn was that? What happened, Jim? They just come off sometimes. Nothing you can do about it. It's only the first chance. Jim shakes off his loss. This one's there. I'm going to swing him. Jim beats nice. Brooks to the first catch. All right, let's do it quick. We're going to let this fish go, so let's get some shots and 
but it's not quite long enough for today's contest. So the guys will toss this one back in the water. We didn't even measure it. It was small. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you got a runner. Screamer, wicked screamer. Jim, I got a feeling that this is just, don't worry, I'm gonna net it for you. A little bigger than yours. Real Bragging Rights is sponsored by Douglas Outdoors, focused on performance. Find your local dealer at douglasoutdoors.com. Riversmith, locked, loaded, and ready to fish. Riversmith.com. Jim and Brooks continue to work Lake Ontario. Jim landed the day's first catch. And although Brooks' line's been hot, he's still looking to hook his first fish. In the river, I'm at a serious disadvantage. Brooks is one of the best fly fishermen I know. But on the lake, that's my arena. I've done that many times. <laughs> yup. Oh yeah, feels real nice, Jim. Jim, I got a feeling that this is just, don't worry, I'm gonna net it for you. A little bigger than yours. Feels good too, oh yeah. When that thing fired, I knew Jim was in for a treat when we landed it. Oh, you got a runner. Screamer, wicked screamer. Don't drop the mat in the water. No, the rod goes off, all right? <laughs> Brooks has just landed his first catch on the lake. <laughs> No. I reeled my fish in and we put the tape on it. It's a beautiful 35 inch king salmon. We've been out here for, I don't know what, an hour. We had a few rods fire off. Jim got one. We finally landed a nice one. Hopefully we can find some more fish like that tonight. And hopefully a lot more in the river in the next few days. What do you think, Jim? A little bigger than yours, right? Yeah. We got time. That's a good fish. I can smell that rod quiver right now, Jim. <laughs> to watch him boat a fish, you know, over 20 pounds, I'm a little nervous, I'm not gonna lie. It's a, that's a big fish. Multiple rods go off at once. I pick up the rod, I set the hook on this fish. I know it's a good fish, but I see the other rod too, and I know I gotta grab that one. Jim, the nice guy that he is, hands the initial rod off to the camera guy. Right. Hooked up. Even the cameraman's hooked up. Woo! Our cameraman, Tanner, he's reeling it in, he's fighting the fish, and I can hear him, he's like, man, it's a big fish, it's a big fish. I grab the other rod, I'm reeling in that fish. I know this is a big one too, I'm like, oh, it's a big fish, Brooks. That's a big one, folks. Think it's bigger than Brooks' fish, Dr. I think it is. Come to Papa. All right. And then, the worst thing in the world that can happen, to a fisherman on a boat. Lines get tangled. We're connected. Kevin is in there, Kevin's scrambling. He's trying to get the lines untangled. Kevin had us going over, going under. Finally get the planer board in, get the lines separated. Hooked up on a giant. Thank God the captain saved you, Jim. Is that on the copper, Jim? Like, yep. <sighs> yeah, it is a big fish, actually. I just see tail right now. Oh my God. Hold back. I thought I lost mine. It just started running at me. Yeah. Woo! Oh my God. Jim knows he needs to beat Brooks' 35 inch King Salmon. I'm in, I'm losing, but I mean, it's a good one right here. It's gonna be close. That's on a J vlog. Oh! Hey now, he saw me. We got him. We got him. Woo! Nice job, guys! Yeah! That's a Cromer. <laughs> That's gonna be close, Brooksy. I think I got you, Jim. I get my fish to the boat and it's a beautiful king. It really is. Beautiful. Lake Ontario. King salmon. That. Uh, right there. When we throw the tape on it. 31 and a half? 31 and a half. Dunk them. I 
I end up a little short. But Tanner's was even bigger. I think the cameraman just caught the biggest fish. <laughs> Jim's 31 and a half inch king just isn't enough to get out of Brooks. Jim's been on the lake a lot more than I have. He definitely had the upper advantage on me, but luckily I knew Kevin was gonna put us on some good fish and I think it would be pretty even depending on who reeled in what. Alright, so it's 7.30 in the morning and we've already been here three hours. We got down here probably 45 minutes before daylight. Uh, the only thing that is biting are the mosquitoes. There are no fish in the river right now. After a day of fishing on Lake Ontario, Jim and Brooks moved to the river in anticipation of the salmon run. They want to be right in the middle of the action with a salmon break loose and head up river. Here at Douglaston Salmon Run, that's two and a half miles of private waters here on the Salmon River where we control the number of anglers. We also oversee the fishing etiquette uh, to ensure everyone is treating the resource and each other with respect. Fall season is the salmon run. The salmon are mature and they're migrating from Lake Ontario up the Salmon River in order to spawn. In the next two to three weeks, thousands of salmon will make their spawning migration up the Salmon River, and that draws in the anglers. Uh, we have Chinook and Coho salmon along with Atlantic salmon. During the Industrial Revolution, uh, the lakes got so polluted, extirpated the Atlantic salmon. In the 1970s, New York State began reintroducing Pacific salmon to take over that top predator in Lake Ontario. The local fish hatchery near Pulaski played a big role in restoring the balance to the lake and the Salmon River. Pacific salmon took off right away, and now they number in the thousands, hundreds of thousands. An angler's dream. I mean, when they limit the numbers, people like to come out here, it makes it real nice. And you go up river, where you're you know, surrounded by hundreds of guys, it can get, get, get a little bit annoying when you get into the season, but this, this particular stretch of the DSR is just a pristine vibe. I'm bringing in a friend of mine who is a guide here on this river, and he's gonna kind of help me out a little bit. He's your wild card? Yeah, his name is George Zervis. George actually brought me here almost a year ago to the day. I caught my first ever salmon on a fly rod right here. So he's my good luck charm. All right. You know, here on the river, I feel super confident in our competition, just from my experience being here so much. I made this bet with Brooks, and I knew that I was gonna be at a serious disadvantage. And so I called in George and said, I need you to find me some fish. George is a local fly fishing guy and runs a nearby outfitter. He grew up on the Salmon River and knows the banks like the back of his hand. George is confident he can help Jim gain the upper hand over Brooks. So it's 7.30 in the morning and we've already been here three hours. We got down here probably 45 minutes before daylight. Uh, the only thing that is biting are the mosquitoes. There are no fish in the river right now. George basically hiked up and down this entire stretch of river the night before and the report wasn't good. It was, you know, one or two here and there and that's about it. Talked to a lot of people, same story, no fish, none. <laughs> I'm from Montreal, Quebec, yes, and I come here every year since at least 12 years now to see a few fish, just a few of them, but we're happy. Even if I don't get anything, at least I see that movement. Well, we didn't see any movement since three days. Too warm the last days, so the water warm up a lot, so the fish just don't come in from the lake. Right now the water temp is in the low 70s. Typically that is a little warm. However, it's cooling off. We're hopeful with this warm spell behind us and these cooler nights that are coming that some fish are gonna start to come in. You gotta wait for a little bit of this cooler air to mix with the water, and I think that might turn them on, but it's a roll of dice, you know? starting to get a little bit frustrated. I mean, we're here, we want to catch them, and we know it's going to happen. It's just, there's no way to predict when. At any given time, there could be a thousand fish that decide to come running up here behind me.
This segment of Real Bragging Rights is brought to you by Brakeline Optics, made for the outdoors. Start your next adventure at BrakelineOptics.com. Portland, world famous fishing line since 1915. Gear up at CortlandLine.com. Hey guys, I want to send a special thank you to Garrett Brancy and the folks at the DSR. Also want to send a very special thank you to Jeff and Amy of the Sanctuary. If you're going to Salmon River and you're looking for a place to stay, I highly recommend those two places. Thanks again, you guys. Jim and Brooks have moved from Lake Ontario to the Salmon River for their last day of fishing. Brooks tops the leaderboard with a 35-inch king salmon. But Jim is bringing in a secret weapon, his friend George Zervos, to help scout the river for the best spot. The anticipation was high that the salmon were going to be in. We know it's going to be a great year on the river. Uh, so we all had breakfast sandwiches, chatted about the day, grabbed the rods and headed to the river. We start fishing, everybody's excited. We get down here early and nothing, no fish. We grinded it out for a few hours and uh, it was fairly disappointing just to see how slow the movement was. Starting to get a little bit frustrated. I mean, we're here, we wanna catch them and we know it's gonna happen. It's just, there's no way to predict when. At any given time, there could be a thousand fish that decide to come running up here behind me. They can change any minute. Any minute. I've been here before with nothing coming up the river, and next thing you know, you're surrounded by thousands of fish. The early season it can be a little hit and miss. However, if you get the right day, you'll have thousands of salmon and no one else around you. And these fish are fresh this time of year. They're bright silver. They just come in from the lake. They're very, very powerful, very well aggressive and willing to take a fly. You know, we know it's salmon fishing and it can happen at any moment. Um, we know how big the year class is out in the lake. We know how many fish are yet to come. So at any minute, this river could break loose. Jim and Brooks know the big run is their best chance for a huge fish. That was tough. A lot of breath. Definitely even had to switch our tactics up and been changing flies every every five minutes. If you switch up and you find the right spots, it makes all the difference. Nice work, my friend. Jim's got a bite. Thank you. He blasted it too. Oh man, that's not good. I'm gonna have to run with him. Looks like this one's giving him a real fight. Coming at ya. Sometimes there's just nothing you can do. That was just a giant king. Ah! It's one of the biggest kings I've ever had on here in the Salmon River. But that would have been the winning fish. I think we figured out a little something. We switched up to some heavier weight. That was just my like second cast and I hooked that fish. And it was hot, come right out of the water almost immediately. The deal is we have to get these fish into this softer water. You get them over there and they quit. And that fish ran me 15 minutes. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And then all of a sudden, like a light switch, these fish just show up. You know, the next six, seven, eight hours today could be some of the best fishing you ever watch on television. Jim needs to land a catch longer than Brooks' 35-inch King Salmon. Pride, bragging rights, and his river quiver, they're all on the line. Coming in in the shallow. Good, 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 good. And he's got a big one. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> well, after Jim hooked up at the head of the hole, I decided to steal a spot while he was taking a break. Nice job, brother. Nothing like having friends that share your fishing hole. We had to re-rig and lighten up. We were fishing really deep for a lot of the day, and we had to move up to some faster, shallower rapids. Jim and Brooks both have hot hands. This is gonna be close, but who's gonna snag the big one? Ah. 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 This 36 inch catch gives Jim the lead. Jim is locked in on landing fish, battling for a monster king salmon. Jim and I are battling neck and neck. I'm 
be honest, Jim's done a lot better today in the river than I thought he was going to do. Putting everything I got into trying to beat him. Oh! Brooks' fishing rod, Betty, has been working overtime. At 36 and a half inches, this gives Brooks the lead back. The guy's day on the river is coming to an end, and Jim knows this is his last shot. Oh! It's a big fish pushing his. I think I might actually like. I got a contender now. If I didn't win, I made it close. I made it like very close. Right on. We need a measurement. Can Jim beat Brooks and take his fishing rod, Betty, home? No! No! I end up a little short. It does look like I'm gonna have to give up my river for the day. It hurts a little bit, but uh, I got a feeling that I'm gonna come back and get a little rematch, maybe in the steelhead season. Maybe I'll take you up on bass fishing somewhere. He yeah, had a chance. Literally, just just inched them out. Fly just only. Just inched them out. I'll still whip him. <laughs> Brooks' 35-inch king salmon makes him the winner. Not only is he gonna walk away with the river quiver, but Brooks gets this week's bragging rights. See you guys. Not only do I lose to him and have to hear about it probably forever, but I lost my brand new river quiver. See you, Jim. Which I'd only had for maybe 72 hours, max. But we had a lot of fun, had a great time at Brooks, and now I'm gonna come back here every year for the rest of my life because this place is incredible. The trip of a lifetime for anyone. <laughs>